In one of the previous videos, we discussed how to perform a supine first rib mobility assessment. Well, let's suppose you do that assessment on one of your patients and you find that one or both of their first ribs are hypomobile. Their ribs will probably be very stiff to that test maneuver, and you might even call it a hard end feel. And the patient may also report some pain initially with that testing maneuver. But while you have the patient right there in the clinic, you ought to just do a first rib mobilization, right? That's part of your treatment if you find hypomobility. Remember, grades one and two mobilizations are for pain reduction, and once the maneuver is not as painful, then you can go into grades three and four to actually increase the range of motion of that first rib. And of course, you want to give the patient an exercise for home that reinforces the mobilization you just did in the clinic. And that exercise is the first rib self-mobilization. To perform this mobilization, the patient will be positioned in seated. Technically, they can also stand. However, I find it a little bit easier to control this and also to relax while they're seated. The patient will also need some kind of a belt or a strap or a long towel that's going to be wrapped around the rib that needs to be mobilized. You can see over here on the right side, I'm actually using a gait belt around my left first rib. But let's suppose we have this patient over here. So we found through mobility testing that she has a hypomobile right first rib. And so the belt, the strap, whatever it is, is wrapped around that first rib. So half of the towel comes over the front of her chest like this. The other half of the towel, which you can't see, is going around her back. But both ends of the towel meet, and you can see she's gripping it with both of her hands right here. Now, once she has this strap wrapped appropriately around her hypomobile first rib, she's going to do three things. Number one, she's going to add a little bit of gentle submaximal cervical retraction via activation of the deep neck flexors. Two, she's going to add a little bit of contralateral cervical side bending. And three, a little bit of ipsilateral cervical rotation. Okay. So because she's mobilizing her right first rib, contralateral side bending would be bending to the left and ipsilateral rotation would be rotation to the right. Again, these are not end range movements, just a little bit of each. And once she has her neck in the appropriate position, she can then pull downward on the strap until she feels pain-free, inferior and medial mobilization of the first rib. So you'll notice that most of the force is exerted downward, so inferior, but there's a little bit of medial pull as well. And again, the way that you can imagine this pull is pulling it down toward the contralateral ASIS, or the opposite hip. So if we're mobilizing the right first rib, pull it down towards the left hip, or the left ASIS. Another thing you can do, although you don't have to, is while holding the stretch, you can also go through cycles of deep pursed lip breathing. Now remember with pursed lip breathing, inhalation is through the nose and exhalation is through pursed lips. Now remember the first rib, if it tends to get stuck in one position, it gets stuck in elevation and we need it to go down. We need it to depress, which is why we're exerting the force mostly downward right? But remember, when we inhale, there's a tendency for the ribs, including the first rib, to elevate. And so by inhaling while we're doing this stretch, we're bringing the first rib up, but it's being blocked by that towel or that strap. And so what we're doing here is we are retraining the first rib to not elevate as much during inhalation, really getting that first rib to have a more normal movement pattern during breathing. And so this part right here is really that neuromuscular re-education approach that you can do simultaneously with the actual stretch. So how do you dose the exercise? Well, first of all, you're gonna give anywhere between two and three sets of this. And because it's a stretch, you're going to hold it anywhere between 30 and 60 seconds per set. Let's take one more look at the first rib self-mobilization here. I've got this gait belt over my left first rib here, so that's the rib I'm going to be mobilizing. I'm actually going to begin with the contralateral side bending, so side bend to the right, and then ipsilateral rotation, rotation to the left, and then finally I'm going to activate those deep neck flexors in here and do a little bit of cervical retraction, like you see right there. Notice here I did the cervical retraction last, 
and I said do it first here. It doesn't matter what order you do any of these in. As long as you're pulling inferomedially on that first rib, you are going to get a good stretch. And then I'm going to pull on that strap in the inferior and medial direction towards that contralateral ASIS. I can even add an additional stretch right here by pulling further on the gate belt. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.